Hey you guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm finally uploading again as I had a little bit of a day off and I believe I'm going to be a little bit late for this one. I'm going to be um, an hour late or half an hour late. Um, so yeah, it will be a little bit late but um, I'll still get it up and we'll get all three of them out um, before the uh, King's Birthday game that starts at 3.20. I'm hoping to get my last one out at 3 p.m as I'll be doing three today, three tomorrow, and then catch up on, um, and then I'll be fully caught up. Anyway, before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into this recap. So Hawthorne versus GWS, what happened? Hawthorne won off a little bit of a free kick downfield in the last minute or so. Uh, Will Day was outstanding. The only problem I have with Will Day is this, he scored a 109, and we've seen him score 109s before, but it had a heavy implication of um, non-disposal points. And I think it was, in the end, somewhere close to 60% non-disposal points, which is basically unsustainable. We all know that as an inside mid. We've seen numbers. We all say, or at least I say, that a non-disposal percentage of around 40% is what you want. Um, and he was up around that 60% range, I believe, as he had... Um, oh no, actually, 40, um, 58 out of 109. So he was around about that 53, 54, which isn't as bad. He got a tackle taken away. Um, what was it? 58 divided by 109. Uh, 53%. That's not that bad. I thought it was a lot worse. I thought the tackle was up bringing... Uh, I thought he was at um, 11 tackles for it, which would have brought him up to 62 over 109, which is around about that um, 57, 58%. Um, so yeah, there is that, and so yeah, he is a one that I don't think will hit the absolute straps. I think there's still some 80 games in there. I think, um, I don't know if they play the Swans again, but, um, let me just check their fixture, because if they do, he will definitely be the one that cops the tag, um, from James Jordan, and we'll get on to that tag, um, actually today. I think, or do we not get onto it? I don't know if we get on to. No, we don't get onto it as the two games from Sunday and the King's birthday are on tomorrow's recaps. Let me just check. I don't think Hawthorne play us again. I don't think we play them again. But could be wrong. No, he doesn't face the Swans tag, but he faces some other tags that I'm sure he'll get in due course. Um, Weddle, 90, he went into the ruck when um, Reeves got subbed out very, very early on. Well, basically, it was at half time that he got subbed out. So Weddle had to become the secondary ruck as, um, who was it? Nash became the ruck. That means that Meek is probably, they're going to, well, I mean, do they go into the bye this week or do they have, um, uh, where is it? They do not have the bye this week. They have another game and then the bye. So um, they probably wanted the bye this week. But yeah, so uh, Josh Weddle went into the ruck. He did pretty good. Um, Dylan Moore, if he didn't have this sec uh, third quarter, sorry, that was so, so poor. And I mean, admittedly, if he didn't have the second quarter that was so, so good, then this is just another poor score. But again, 83 from him. Warple, 83. I thought he was really, really damaging. I mean, his super coach score was like a 120 or something like that. It was pretty high because he basically snuffed uh, snuffed out the likes of, uh, of Tom Green in the second half. And he scored in the end. What was it in the end? Warple, Warple scored a 112 in super coach. So yeah, he scored really, really well. Newcomb here as well, he scored a 79 and a 98, he was pretty impactful, just not really getting those huge fantasy scores, but impactful in terms of um, engineering the result of the game. Sicily, um, so Newcomb was actually 80, uh, yeah 80, Sicily was 79, um, Sicily had a really big third quarter. Nash went into the ruck and did alright, admittedly it wasn't anything special, but I, mean, I swear he went into the ruck, he just, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Let me just see. Did he get any? He got one hit out the whole game. He got one hit out the whole game and that was here. But I swear he went into the ruck. I'm actually going to check the ruck contest for that just to check if I was right in thinking that. Um, oh no, Josh Weddle went majority into the ruck after that actually. Now looking at it. And then Connor Nash went in um, a little bit less. So that's really weird that they went from having your number two ruck in Connor Nash, who shouldn't be your number two ruck, but having him your number two ruck, 
and then going and swapping your number one ruck gets injured, but then swapping another guy over the top. It's a really weird one. MP78, but I mean, they won the game, so who cares? Um, Massimo D'Ambrosio, really damaging for his 75. Um, he lived up to that best wingman in the comp, but I just feel like uh, Errol Gordon might have pipped him. There, as Errol had a 37 disposal effort over, um, I think, D'Ambrosio is about 15 or 20. D'Ambrosio had, where is it, 23 touches. So, yeah, 14 more touches a goal and a lot more non-disposal work for Errol. McDonald, 73. Deer, I thought, was really, really good for his 68, but not fancy relevant. Aim on 65 just shows these sort of, everyone seems to have these up and down games, and it seems a lot more volatile this year. Ginevan, Gunston, Choll, Trimshaw, um, Jath, McKenzie, Frost, Hard- Hardwick, Frost, Bruce, Mitchell, and then Reeve subbed out very, very early. Then you go over to GWS and Whitfield, a 1-2-3. He is, well, back to his best, but he's copying the Swans tag in a little bit, so I wouldn't be touching him at all. Briggs, one fifteen. He was huge just because the right contest just basically turned his way, and he got, he got to do basically whatever he wanted. Peatling, 98, I thought he was absolutely huge. But then again, I'm just I'm just worried that he's going to not really have a standout game. And then sort of you're stuck with a guy that's sort of averaging what he's averaging. And, um, well, let me rephrase that. He's going to do pretty well. And I say that in the sense that he's going to score probably 80 to 100 when Kelly and also, um, who else, Cornelio are out of that midfield. But immediately when that midfield um, turns sour, as in those two boys come back, Peatling is going to probably almost be dropped. Um, so yeah, it's it's an awkward one, and I just don't know whether it's the right choice, whether to go ultimate value, or whether it's the right choice just to sort of um, not just sort of let him go and get other upgrades. But he because he could be absolutely huge for the next couple of weeks. So I have to look at his pricing when it comes out uh, tonight. Riccardi O'Halloran, um, Conor O'Donnell, Tom Green, what a fade out this was. Three points in the third and 22 in the last. He just, yeah, just had a stinker of a third quarter. If that's a 19 or 20 point quarter, then we're looking at a guy that has a 93 or 94 or something like that. Um, and yeah, so it sucks, but yeah, he just got tagged effectively. Um, O'Halloran needed four goals to get to an 82. Dunn needed um, a lot of um, marks, it seems, which is understandable given he's halfback. Um, Himmelberg as well, he had a pretty good start to this game and then faded. He had, like, what was that? Um, 14 in the first nine minutes and then didn't do pretty much anything else. Um, Finn Callahan, a lot of not a lot of handballs here. I think he ended up with about 30-odd touches, but they were all pretty much handballs. Um, if I look at the disposal count, he ended up with 28 touches and barely any non-disposal work. So, yeah, they were just a lot of handballs, 23 handballs, 5 kicks. Brett Daniels, 71. Hogan, 66. Weyer, 63. Haynes, 56. So those who went Haynes as a potential sort of option, they kind of got smashed because he did nothing after quarter time or nothing after halfway through the uh, first quarter as he was on 22, 20 minutes into the game and then ended up on a 56, so 34 in roughly 100 minutes of game time. Really slowed down. Ward, 52. Tom uh, Toby, 52. Uh, Taylor, 46. Angwin, for those who jumped on him and just showing that you shouldn't go for these priced out rookies that are, don't really have a role. He scored a 41. Alir, Bedford, Cadman, McMullen. He came on and scored a 34 very, very quickly. So he looks like a really quality player. He's just not getting the right role to really prove it. Thomas, 32. And then Callum Brown, uh, 12. And I don't know what happened with Callum Brown from memory. Did he go down with an injury or something? Or was it just subbed out because he was playing horrifically? But anyway, that is the video there, I guess. If it will, uh, there we go click the wrong button if that will let me get back um but that is the video there recapping hawthorne versus gws wanted to make it a little bit quicker so that i could get it out to you guys before the 1 p.m but anyway that is the video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys